Good evening and thank you for joining us for Crimson News at 11 tonight. I'm Mark Hanrahan. A Stevens County man who went missing in September was found buried on his own property and now his wife and two stepsons are in custody. Detectives believe they were involved in the murder and tried to cover it up. Crimson News' Kyle Simchuk visited the property and talked to a neighbor who knew the family. What happened to Jerry Rasmussen? It's a question his neighbor John has thought about for months. She told the ladies living around here that uh, um, Jerry had went to California on a business trip and that she hoped that he would be all right. Stevens County detectives heard a different story from Jerry's wife, Brenda, who said her husband had cabin fever and went on a motorcycle ride last September. He never came home. I wake up at night thinking about how close that was. Detectives say Brenda and her two sons, Danny and Andrew, were cooperative at first, but the brothers always seemed nervous when asked about where they thought their stepfather could be. Last fall, Jerry's biological son drove up to the town of Valley to help with the search. He told detectives the whole situation didn't add up. Jerry's son showed up, and there I heard arguing and whatnot going on up here and people walking around and Danny speeding down the road, take off. According to court documents, less than a month after Jerry went missing, Brenda and her sons took off and stopped talking to authorities. So this is the house that Brenda and Jerry Rasmussen shared. And when Brenda and her sons went radio silent, Stevens County detectives brought in human remains detection dogs and they hid on a shed on the backside of the house. A few weeks later, the sheriff's office brought in heavy equipment and started digging. The storage shed was delivered around the same time Jerry went missing. Detectives had it moved, and as they dug beneath it, the smell of human decomposition became overwhelming, according to court documents. They were up there for a while with the backhoe. Six feet down in the dirt, they uncovered the top of a human head. What's it like knowing that he was buried there for three well, months? That's, you know, it's still kind of spooky for me. I think about it all the time and you know, how, yeah, how short life is because Jerry worked so hard and, you know, I'm sure he was looking for an easier life later. The medical examiner confirmed it was Jerry Rasmussen. He died from a gunshot wound to the head. U.S. Marshals arrested Brenda and her sons on Monday in Fort Mojave, Arizona. They'll be extradited back to Stevens County. It's like you see on the TV all the time. You'd never expect that from your neighbor. Kyle Simchuk, Krem 2 News. Mask mandate no more, at least for outdoor venues. Governor Jay Inslee announced Washington's outdoor mask mandate will be lifted next Friday. As for the indoor mask mandate, the governor says that'll be updated come next week. The outdoor mask mandate was put into place for events with 500 or more people. So when it warms up at outdoor concerts and football games, you'll no longer need to wear a mask. The decision comes as the state is starting to see a decline of COVID cases and hospitalizations. Now we have projections of a very steep decline leading to, we hope, extremely low numbers by the first week in March. We believe this uh, wave has gone up like a rocket and it's going to come down like a rock. Meantime, to the relief of many parents and children, Washington's superintendent of public education is saying it is time to end the statewide mask mandate in schools. He released a statement today asking the governor to eliminate the statewide mandate and allow the decision to be made by local health officials. Superintendent Chris Rakedahl was adamant that masks did work, but acknowledged that we have other tools now as well. He is hoping that mandate could be removed in the coming weeks. Well, Spirit Games are continuing tonight with a big rivalry between East Valley versus West Valley. They are facing off in the Golden Throne game at the Spokane Arena. Each student section being as spirited as possible so they can take home that coveted prize. A little later in the broadcast, we'll show you who won the game and who took home that Golden Throne. All right, let's talk weather now. We almost hit 50 degrees in Spokane today and our streak of nice February weather isn't over just yet. Let's get out to meteorologist Thomas Patrick in the Outdoor Weather Center. And Thomas, what can folks expect when they wake up tomorrow morning? Yeah, tomorrow morning, really more of the same. Obviously, our temperatures have been close to about 32 degrees day after day this week. No change there. No change for our high temperatures either. In fact, today, a little bit warmer than it was recently, making it the warmest day of 2022 so far. 49 here in Spokane, 50 out of Coeur d'Alene. Fairly clear skies for tonight, so obviously those temperatures get a little bit cool because of 
of that. There it is about 32, 33 degrees around sunrise for tomorrow morning. Then we're right back into the 40s and yes, even 50s for some. But the clear skies tonight are really going to help with a slim chance to see the northern lights for this evening. I'll detail just when is the best time to see the Aurora Borealis across the inland northwest. That is coming up in my full forecast in a few moments. Talk to you then, Thomas. Thank you very much. In other northwest news now, the Washington State Attorney General is asking for help finding Bessie Ann Freedom Handy. She was last seen in February of 2021 at a motel in Fife, which is just outside of Tacoma. Bessie is a member of the Puyallup tribe. Authorities say she may have shaved or cut her hair very short and also dyed it blonde. Now to your night beat with a quick look at the day's top stories. Victim impact statements continued today in the sentencing of the Freeman School shooter. And today we heard from the bus driver who took the shooter to school that morning. A victim's advocate read her statement in court. I wanted to stand up in that gym and tell every single one of the parents, community members, that I did my job that day. I safely picked up and delivered their children to school. Well, she says the shooter rode her bus the day of the shooting, but she was unaware of his plans. That morning, she asked him to store his golf bag in the under compartment of the bus, not knowing what was inside that bag. She told the judge after the shooting, she felt shunned by Freeman parents. Court will resume for a final day of statements tomorrow morning. Well, you may notice the Brown Street Railroad underpass looks a bit different right now. The city says it's an effort to reduce the amount of people camping there and blocking pedestrian traffic. The city installed fencing on the sidewalks as a health and safety measure, they said. According to Mayor Nadine Woodward, the fencing is ADA compliant, and that means at 36 inches wide, the fence should allow for pedestrians and people in wheelchairs to pass through. The city hopes the fence will decrease how often crews need to go out there and clean it up. Well, it is Boomtown Week here at Krem 2, so we wanted to look into the data from the latest 2020 census and how it has changed over the past decade. The numbers detail how much growth the area has seen since 2010 and why we are facing the housing crisis that we see today. So coming up in just about five minutes, we'll break down those numbers and show you how Spokane County compares to other counties in the state of Washington. And that was your night beat. To learn more about any of these stories, just text us the word night to 509-448-2000 and we'll send them directly to your phone. More Russian troops are headed to the Ukraine and Russia border. Six Russian ships were traveling toward the Black Sea while taking part in military exercises. Meanwhile, missile systems arrived in Belarus as Russian military exercises continue amid a potential Russian invasion of Ukraine. Canadian authorities are now trying to find ways to end a 12 day long protest at the Canadian and U.S. border. The quote Freedom Convoy is in opposition to vaccine mandates for cross border drivers, which has now expanded to just an overall protest opposed to COVID restrictions. Plans for a convoy style protest in the U.S. Those are now gaining supporters, at least online. When it comes to tactical vehicles. Um, we need to work with industry and with academia to develop the technologies we need. Today, the U.S. Army unveiled its climate strategy plan to cut down on carbon emissions and electrify its fleet of vehicles. They are trying to meet a 50 percent reduction in greenhouse gas emissions by the year 2030, with an ultimate goal of zero emissions by 2050 by using fully electric vehicles. All right, don't go to bed just yet. Coming up, we'll break down the numbers as how Spokane County continues to grow as a city and a county. And by now you've heard Spokane's housing market is certainly hot, but some say they have seen homes sitting on the market longer than usual lately. So tomorrow on Up With Cram, our Tim Pam continues our Boomtown coverage, taking a look at if the market is still booming. We are back in just 90 seconds.